Here's nine odd pros of gear acquisition syndrome. Yes, I am completely biased. Of course I am. I like gear. Don't worry, this video won't be just my head talking all the time. I'll be doing some slow motion shots of gear. I wanted to do this video because I just started seeing lots of articles and other videos about the gear acquisition syndrome. And these videos and articles are often great. But the underlying assumption is that gas is bad for you and you should get rid of it. And I'm just presenting the idea that that might not necessarily be the case. Number one, for the artist, the music itself isn't the point. It's the process that's the enjoyable part. I actually did a little poll on Instagram and for many, nearly 60% said that it's the process and that enjoying the process is the important part of making music. And what could be more essential to the music making process as the tools? Number two, behind every piece of software or piece of gear, there's a person who made it. Of course, sometimes also a team of people. And nowadays, a lot of this gear can best be classified as a piece of art. And I would argue that a lot of mirror rack modules and effects pedals nowadays can be classified as functional art. And by buying it, you're supporting these artists or teams of artists. Yes, of course, there are corporations like Roland and Behringer. Maybe you're not supporting anybody there. No, that's not true, because even in Korg, there's Tetsuo Takahashi, you know? And you can call that guy an artist, an engineering artist. Not to mention people like Tony Ronaldo from Make Noise or Joel Corte from Chase Bliss, you know? These guys are visionary, and they're changing how music is made as much as any other musician. By buying their gear, you're supporting them. Okay, maybe you don't like supporting Uli Behringer, then don't buy from Uli Behringer. But even Uli Behringer is making stuff that's cheap enough so that anybody can buy it, really. I mean, he's not killing cattle and making hamburgers, right? These are not the corporations we're talking about. These are not the corporations you're looking for. Number three, gas could be thought of as an investment. I mean, I don't think anybody would argue against uh, the fact that vintage guitars and vintage analog synths have gone up in price. It could easily be argued that acquiring some gear is a form of investment. Just saying. Number five, a pro of gas can actually be thought of as resetting your beginner's mind. And a beginner's mind is a valuable thing, you know? In terms of creativity, you're sort of exploring new ideas instead of following old patterns. This is a way of getting inspiration. And it's just as valid as going out and listening to the birds. In fact, maybe even more so because you're actually taking inspiration from the way that the designer or the maker of the gear thinks of music. And that's a valuable thing as well, you know? It's a new perspective of music that you might not have developed otherwise. Or at least you're expanding your perception of what music is. Number six, another way to think of music gear is just as different shades of colors for a painter, you know? Uh, you wouldn't ever say to a painter, oh, you can't use that much blue. It's just different shades of colors that you can use in any way in your expression. Just like you're choosing between a Strat or a Gibson or whatever. And the real reason why there's so much gas is because there's so much awesome gear being made. And that's a fantastic thing. We're really living in a golden age of gear. Why would we make it a thing to worry about, you know? Number seven, gear is a way of getting inspiration. And inspiration is a valuable thing. If not to the world, at least to you in your process and in your life, you know? Don't underestimate the value of feeling inspired. Yes, it's maybe a bit of a crass way of getting inspiration, but if you're stuck, you can buy a new piece of gear and find back into the fun of the process of making music. Number eight, you actually get to sort of emulate your favorite artists in a way by buying at least similar gear to what they've used. And that's also okay. It's actually one of the really fun parts of music making. I mean, Collecting gear is just like collecting anything else, you know? Yeah, maybe it's a distraction from music, but it's also a form of deciding your music aesthetic, you know? Everything from choosing between a Strat to a Gibson to a drum machine to, a, to an 808 or a 909, you know? It's, it's all aesthetic choices. And they do have an influence on the music that you're making. Of course they do. Number nine, gas is also a way of sending cheaper gear downstream, you know? In fact, if you buy stuff and you flip it, you're selling it again for a slightly less price, and maybe you're selling it off to a kid who does play the clarinet or the drum machine or whatever. So in a way, it could be argued that you're actually helping out your fellow musicians in some sort of way, you know? This is especially true in the guitar pedal and the Eurorack module market. Yeah, sure, there's the argument of too much consumerism is bad for you, but you know, you're not buying 10 burgers that you can't eat here. You're buying one piece of gear, you try it out, it's not for you, you sell it on for a little bit cheaper. 
that's okay. I would guess that gas is really bad if you just buy stuff and throw it out, but I hope nobody's doing that. Hey, leave a comment if you have any pros and cons of uh, gear acquisition syndrome. I've probably missed a few and uh, yeah, it would make the comment section quite an awesome resource and a fun read. Click like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.